What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and today I'm gonna to be showing you the first 14 things you should do after unboxing your brand new Galaxy S20, S20 Plus, or S20 Ultra. I'm also gonna be doing some speed tests, some battery tests, and some in-depth comparisons to the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the Note 10 Plus, so definitely stay tuned for those videos. But anyways, in this video, we're gonna go over the first 14 things I did after unboxing and going through the initial setup process on my S20 Ultra. So these are gonna be a mix of basic settings to change, tips, tricks, and new features to check out on your brand new device. So let's go ahead and get straight into the first one. And this is something that you should have done in the initial setup process, but if you did not, this is something you should do first thing, and that is to set up your biometrics and your security. So if we go into our settings here and then go down to biometrics and security, you wanna set up either facial recognition, fingerprints, or at least a passcode. I recommend having facial recognition just because I believe that is the fastest way to get into your phone and the most accurate, especially because the fingerprint is in display and you don't always know where to press, but you should go ahead and set up facial recognition right here. Just go ahead and tap on that. And inside these settings, you can also add an alternative look. So if you wear glasses or if you have somebody else that you want to be able to get into your phone, you could set that up there. You can also remove face data right here if you wanted to re-enter it right there. And then you have all these other options here as well. Now with fingerprints, this is also something you should go ahead and add just as another way to get into your phone. So all you want to do is just go ahead and put your finger on the display right here and it's going to be right in the middle and you're going to kind of have to remember this spot for when you go ahead and unlock your phone. So we're going to have to reposition it right here. We're just going to go ahead and use different sides of our thumb right there and you can see it does add the fingerprint just like so. You can add another one if you want to. I'm not going to. And you also have these settings here that you can configure with the fingerprint. So just go ahead and set up facial recognition and the fingerprint if you did not do so in the initial setup process. Now, the next thing you guys want to do is just go ahead and test out that brand new 120 hertz refresh rate. You did not pay a lot of money to not check out the 120 hertz refresh rate. So if we go into our settings and then go to display and we go down to motion smoothness, you will see the option to choose between 60 hertz and 120 hertz. So you can see right here, high refresh rate 120 and then standard refresh rate 60 hertz. Now, one thing to note is that you will get noticeably worse battery life when using the high refresh rate 120 hertz compared to 60 hertz. So just keep that in mind. It could be worth it, especially in the initial phases, just to show off to friends and just see it for yourself. But you may not want to keep that on long term and all the time. But I will say that I am impressed with just how smooth that 120 hertz is. It feels really, really good when you use it in person. Now, we also want to go ahead and change our other display settings, like our resolution, our timeout time, and things like that. So if you go to our settings and then go to display, you can see this is where all of our options are. So if you want a dark mode, you can go ahead and do that right there. I like light mode for now, but we can go down to adaptive brightness. You can have that turned on or off. We have our motion smoothness right there, of course. We do also have the blue light filter, which could be good for some people, especially at night. We do also have the screen mode, but we wanna go down to screen resolution right here. So this is WQHD. This is the actual max resolution you can do. But if you turn that on and apply, you're gonna see this message right here if you are using 120 Hertz. So the high refresh rate is not supported in the top resolution. So it's gonna to change to the standard refresh rate if you go ahead and select that. So just go ahead and press OK. So you will get better quality out of your screen, but you are limited to just 60 hertz refresh rate. Now we also have the screen timeout, and this is something that I always change pretty much instantly once I get any new phone. And I would recommend having this on like five or 10 minutes, maybe two minutes if you you know use your phone a lot, but I hate when the phone dims when I'm trying to read something or something like that. So I would definitely recommend having this at either five or 10 minutes. I have mine personally on five, but this is personal preference. I would just go ahead and suggest changing that. Now, the next thing I did was enable gestures. So if we go into our settings and go to display and then go down to navigation bar, and I like having full screen gestures turned on. And this allows us to not have the navigation buttons, but instead just go up like that to go home on the little button down here, just like in iOS, just swipe up there to go home. And if you want to go back on things, you can just swipe from the side of the screen. And it just makes everything a lot more fluid and a lot easier to navigate around the OS, much better than the buttons in my opinion. So definitely go ahead and enable those gestures. And if you click on more options right here, you can see you can change the back gesture sensitivity. I like it at the default, but you can adjust that if you want to. And if we go into advanced features right here, you can see we do also have an option for motions and gestures. And you can see right here, you have other options that you can go ahead and change. I like having lift to wake turned off. I believe that's on by default. I don't like it just because it can drain battery and every time you lift your phone up, it turns the screen on. I don't like that, but you can change that if you want to. Smart stay is another thing that I do like as well. This basically means that when you're looking at your phone, it won't lock. So this could kind of counter 
that setting I talked about earlier with the auto lock, you may want to just have this on and that way your auto lock can be set to like 30 seconds or whatever. But definitely go ahead and take a look at these features in here and adjust them accordingly. The next thing you guys want to do is learn all about the camera shortcuts and the gestures. So inside the camera, there's a lot more you can do in here than what first meets the eye. So basically on photo, you can stay on photo and record videos and take GIFs and things like that. So obviously if you tap it, it will take a still photo, but if you tap and hold, it will start recording a video and when you let go, it will stop recording that video right there. And then if you tap and swipe down, you can see it starts taking a lot of images and it will actually create a GIF out of those images that you just took. So that's really cool, a really easy way to make a GIF in the native camera application. I really like that. We also have a cool little feature inside of video that allows us to record from the front and the rear facing camera in the same video. We can basically flip it. So if we're like vlogging or something like that, if you're on the rear facing camera, you can tap this to flip the camera to the front facing camera and then flip it back again as many times as you want. And as you can see, it's still recording. It's all in the same video, which is pretty cool. And speaking of the camera, the next thing you guys want to do is test out the 100X digital zoom and the 8K video recording. So these are the two headlining features of the S20 Ultra. So of course, this will be exclusive to the S20 Ultra and not any of the other S20s. But these are worth checking out because they are really, really cool. I don't know how much you're going to use either one of these, but with photo, if we go to photo right here, we can see if we tap on any of these, we can go ahead to 100X. If we tap on that, it goes all the way in to 100X right there. You can go back just like so, or you can just go ahead and pinch to zoom and get a really precise zoom right there. You don't have to go all the way to 100X, but if you wanted to get a little bit more precise, you could do it like so, and you get nice little haptic feedback as well. So there's a little 100X picture I just took. Obviously, it's not going to look great. I'm in an office. I'm not really somewhere where you would use it, but just test it out. It's fun to do, especially if you're outdoors and trying to capture like monuments or something like that. 100X digital zoom could be really cool. Also with video, like I said, you can shoot in 8K. It's going to take up a lot of space, but if we go to our settings right here and go to rear video size, you can see right up top there, we have 8K, 16 by 9, 8K. So it's 7680 by 43. 20 and you can see the selected resolution does not support tracking autofocus and video effects so that is the downfall that is the pitfall of shooting in 8k you don't have the tracking autofocus but it will be cool to just test out 8k video and obviously if you have an 8k monitor it will be cool to watch it on that or on a tv or something that you have in 8k you can go ahead and watch those videos and see how they turn out of course, you can watch them on the phone as well, but it's probably not going to look too much different from 4K. But those are just some of the headlining features that gives this phone that expensive 1400 starting price tag. So definitely go ahead and check out the 100X digital zoom and the 8K video recording just to show off to your friends and test out for yourself. The next thing you guys should consider changing is your top six. So if you go ahead and swipe down right here, you can see we have six toggles right there that are in view right when you pull down on the navigation bar. So you want to make sure these are things that you actually use. So if you swipe down to bring all of these up right here and tap on these three dots right there, go to button order. And this is where you can actually change the order of your top six. So say I wanted power mode to be in place of flashlight, just go ahead and drag this over there. That way it's in my top six, go ahead and tap on done, go ahead and swipe up. And now you can see I have that right there instead of the flashlight for easy access. So just make sure those are things that you actually use up there and just go ahead and configure them to your liking. Another thing you may have noticed on my S20 that may not be on yours right now is the battery percentage. So by default, you do not have your battery percentage up there next to the battery. So to change this, go into your settings, go to notifications, and then go down to status bar. And right here, you can see the option to show battery percentage. You also get the option here to show notification icons, which are up there on the top left next to the time. You can have it show all notifications or just your three most recent, or you could just have number of notifications, which is really clean. I'm actually gonna change mine to that because you can see it changes it up there from three most recent instead of showing the icons just to the number of notifications right there. I actually like that. So I'm gonna keep it on that. So just go ahead and adjust that. And you do wanna see the battery percentage up there as well, just because it is handy to know. The next thing I did was configure the edge panel. So you can see right here, if I swipe over on the edge, I can get all the applications that I use most frequently. And this is very handy and something you should definitely do if you like to get shortcuts to applications and open them quickly. So to do this, go into your settings, you wanna to go to display and then go ahead down to edge screen. And then right here you have edge panels. You could go ahead and turn that on. If you tap on this, you can actually see you have these different things you can configure in here as well. So if you swipe over and then you swipe inside of the edge panel, you can also have quick access to contacts. So it's called people right here. But if you don't want that, of course you can go ahead and disable that right there. And then when you swipe over, you can see you can't do that any longer. So definitely worth setting up 
your edge panel just to quickly access either people or applications. The next thing you guys should do is set up Find My Mobile and SOS Message. So these are going to be some features that could actually save you or your phone. So if we go into our settings and then go down to advanced features and then go all the way to the bottom, you can see that's where we have send SOS messages. If you tap on that, you wanna go ahead and enable this just in case. So you will have to agree to some terms right here and you can see it first prompts you to at least add one recipient for when you may be in danger. So this is where you're gonna to have to select or create a contact. And then once you have that contact in there, you can go ahead and invoke this feature. You can see right there, it says, press the side key quickly three times to send a quick alert to your emergency contacts when you're in an emergency situation. So if you just tap this three times, it will do that and it will send a message. You can also have it attach pictures and attach audio recording, a five second audio recording when that actually happens. So when you tap that, it will record the audio and you could also have it attach pictures as well from the front and the rear cameras, which is really, really cool and a great safety feature that I recommend enabling. Now, as for Find My Mobile, this is something that can actually save your phone if it were to get stolen. So if you go into our settings and then go to biometrics and security, you can see right here, Find My Mobile. You wanna make sure this is turned on so you could track down your phone if somebody were to steal it. And if you tap on it, you could see the different things you could do. You can have remote unlock, send last location, which I would recommend actually having that on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And you can see all of the information for how to access and see you know, where your phone's at. So definitely two features you should strongly consider changing and adding on your S20. Now we all hate Bixby. We've always hated Bixby. So one of the things you guys are going to notice when using the S20 is that sometimes if you held on the power button right here, it would pull up Bixby. But if you want to remap that, you can. So if we go into our settings and then go to advanced features right here, you can see side key right there. It will allow you to remap that if you wanted to have it on an application or if you just wanted to press and hold it's not going to wake bixby it will power off i believe wake bixby was the default but if you wanted it to just turn off just go to power off menu and then right here if you double press it i have mine set to quickly launch the camera just because i think that's convenient but if you want it to open up in a different application or if you like Bixby, you can go ahead and do that there as well. So just consider changing these different options for the side key because it is very handy. Now, if I go ahead and lock my phone, you guys may notice that my phone looks different than yours. And that's because I have my always on display right there without actually having to tap it, which by default, it's just going to be a black screen and you won't see anything. So if you guys want it to look like this, where you just see an always on display, even when your phone's locked all the time, you can change this. So let me just go ahead and show you how to do that. So inside our settings, if we go to lock screen right here, you will see always on display right there. Go ahead and tap on that. And this is where you can change it to either show always, show as scheduled, or the default, which is tap to show. You can also have it show music information, which I like having right there. You can also rotate the screen. You can have auto brightness set. You can have all these different things you could change for the always on display. The next thing I did was install applications and customize the home screen. So I have this wallpaper right here. I have a couple different applications I like. This one called Wallcraft and then Wally. Those are two really great wallpaper applications where you can get great wallpapers. I would definitely recommend putting a custom wallpaper wallpaper on here just to make your device look unique and stand out from the rest. And you also want to customize the home screen to your liking, put some widgets on there. If you go ahead and tap and hold anywhere on the screen, you can see you get different things down here. You have wallpaper themes. You can also install a theme if you want to. I like the default look. Some of the themes kind of look tacky, but you can change that if you want to. We also have widgets right here. So if you wanted to add some widgets like Bixby routines, you have your calendar, Chrome, clock, and all these different things in here as well. So if you wanted to add those, you could do so. And then also over here on the far right is home screen settings. So this is where you change a lot of the grid layout and your apps, you know, how many apps you want in a row and how many on the actual page. I like mine at five by five. And then my app screen, I like that to be in a grid. So you just swipe up to get to all your applications. And while I'm in here, actually, if you go ahead and tap these three dots right here, I like to have mine sorted by alphabetical order. That way I kind of just know where everything is and things don't get lost. So you can change that if you want to. And you have some other things in here you can change as well, like your home screen settings. That's just gonna take you back to where we just were. But you could change all these options inside of here. You also have the hide apps section right here. So if you wanted to hide some applications, you could do that by simply tapping on hide apps right there. And the final thing you guys should do is install a good screen protector and get a good case. So the case is the biggest one. There's already a built-in screen protector, but if you wanted a better, more protective one, you should go ahead and do that, especially if you're gonna be using your phone outdoors a lot. So anyways, one of the first things I noticed with the S20 Ultra specifically is that my index finger would always hit the bottom of this camera bump. And I think that a case will mitigate that issue for most people. So you can see right here, I have a few cases. I will leave all these linked 
down in the description below. We have the official Samsung cases right here. We also have some cases from Elixir right here. I will leave these linked down in the description below, but definitely go ahead and check out some of these cases. Now the smart LED view cover case is really cool. And right once you put it in, you actually have to install some applications right there. And when you shut it, you actually see that you can see your notifications and the time on the front of the case when it's closed, which is pretty cool. And that's what makes this case so appealing and it's pretty expensive, but it is definitely worth checking out. And also my finger does not run into that camera bump when I have a case on. So definitely install a case or have a case put on your S20 Ultra. It's not gonna be as big of a deal for the S20 and S20 Plus, but the Ultra, definitely go ahead and rock a case. Again, I will have some of the good cases that I like linked down in the description below. So there you have it, guys. Those are the first 14 things I did after getting my brand new Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. Hope you guys did enjoy this video, and I may have another video coming on more advanced tips and tricks if you guys like this video. So let me know down in the comment below if you would like to see additional you know, features and tips and tricks on the S20 and S20 Ultra. I will try to make those happen but if you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you out i would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and of course consider subscribing but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon